this is Tim Pierce. That was my solo from John Waits' Change. It was actually the uh, very first top 20 single I ever played on, you know, a long, long time ago. <laughs> but I think it's a good example of a short and sweet and very melodic solo. I'm still very proud of it. Click the link below if you want to check out the masterclass. Whether you stay or not, the first two weeks have always been free. So check it out if you want to take some lessons. John Waite's biggest hit was called Missing You. That was on the next record, the following record. The record that this song is on change was called Ignition. It was produced by Neil Giraldo. Neil was flying high with his Pat Benatar success. He and Pat are husband and wife. They were having huge hits and John hired Neil to produce. Uh, it was in New York during the winter. I was there for six weeks initially and then came back for another two weeks. Uh, it was very exciting for me because Neil taught me some studio skills that he had learned that really helped me uh, from then on, stuff that I use to this day. One of the things he taught me was, I mean, the basis for this song is this riff. <laughs> Now, we were using JCM 800 Marshalls, which are dirty amps, but for a rhythm part like this, all you have to do with your Marshall kind of cranked up to make it work is turn down to seven or maybe five. And then mute it. I'm gonna go down to five from seven. The hard thing about this riff is I kind of have to crouch down. It's kind of a challenge. I played this on a BC Rich Mockingbird. You know, BC Rich Mockingbird in full regalia with the horn down here and the horns up here. Now, in the production of this, Neil taught me another thing. The second verse lift part, which is very a, a very uh, common thing when you're building a song and you're recording something and making a record, you want to do something in the second verse that actually lifts it. And this part, he showed me this part. And they're like horn stabs. And it's basically the same notes that are down here, but up the octave and just as stabs. And that was something I learned from Neil and it built the second verse. If you just listen to the song, it's a simple thing that built it. The other thing that I added, uh, because it's not on the original song, which was written by Holly Knight in a band called Spider. If you look for that on YouTube, you'll hear and see an amazing new wave version of this song. I think I came up with that and he grabbed it. It's just a hook in the pre-chorus. An octave walk down. So that's really all the guitar parts. The rest of it's filled out with keyboards, vocals, and background vocals.
Now, a very important thing happened when I was in New York doing this record with John Waite, Neil Giraldo, and Bob Clearmountain, who was engineering. John Bon Jovi was living upstairs in the apartment up there. Uh, his cousin, Tony Bon Jovi, was running and owning the power station. And that's when we did the demos for Bon Jovi. And that's how I ended up playing the guitars on Runaway. These were master demos. And it happened because I was there working with John Waite. And John Bon Jovi liked my sound, liked my guitar playing, and he invited me back. I was living in L.A., invited me back to do his master demos, one of which made it onto the first record, the song Runaway, and that's the song you hear today. The way I entered the solo is with a walk up and I kind of mute it with my palm. Now what I'm doing here is I'm arpeggiating an A flat minor nine chord that's up here. It's the same as a B major seven. I don't know if you're familiar with B major seven, but here's B and you drop the one back to the seven right there. And the fingers lay out really nicely that way. So if I walk up, and pull, I'm basically above this pentatonic position. Now, one of the things that's kind of difficult is pulling up this note because generally when I pull strings, there are other fingers helping. Or this finger is always helping this finger, and sometimes there's three fingers helping. But here, I've just got one finger, so even though it's only a half step pull, it takes a bit of strength. And the way I manage that is by turning my wrist so the whole wrist basically put strength into pulling up this one note with the index finger. Because you want to hold pitch. And these are nines, but it's still a bit of, uh, it takes a bit of strength. Then I drop down. And that's very strongly voiced against the A flat minor chord. Now I go up the neck and come back down with the destination in mind, and that's the G flat, which exists up here. Now you can call it F sharp also, either enharmonic, meaning different names for the same chord. So I come up, and I'm leading with the B string, and when I land there, it's a small piece of the G flat. And I pause and slide off. Okay, the chord change restarts. And I do this double stop here. I'm down at A flat minor pentatonic and I pull up. And I'm blending all these tones together. Making sure I match the pitch here. The band goes back to E, and I do this. And that creates kind of an E major seven tonality. And then I drop there, and that's to match the G flat here. And I trace the G flat chord. Sing it right there, and I arpeggiate back this way. And instead of landing here, this note, I pull up. And that's kind of voice leading into B major, which is where the band lands at the end of this solo chord sequence. And I'm pretty sure I know what happened there. I was gonna end on the low note. And I thought, the solo needs to end on a high note. So I jumped up and it actually worked out pretty well. So the whole solo.
Kind of nice the way these double stops blend with the distortion. And once again here also. Short and sweet, but I was always proud of the way the composition of it was. Thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. If you are a subscriber, please ring the bell. It lets us let you know every time a new video is released. You can also support us by clicking the link below for the online masterclass. As I always say, we're up to over 100 hours of lessons and content, over a thousand videos, and we add more every month. There's a 14-day free trial. Take your time, take a long look. We'd love to have you join us.